A seemingly harmless search for salamander eggs was started in 1991 by five young boys against the peaceful backdrop of Mount Waryong in South Korea. But what happened to them on that fateful day will become a terrifying story known as the Frog Boys case. The boys vanished from their hometown of Daegu as the sun fell, sparking a desperate search that would engulf the entire country for years to come. Welcome to As Told by Bells, where mysteries unfold, the bizarre becomes reality, and strange stories come to life. I'm Bells, your guide into the world of the unexplained. Every Sunday, we'll delve into unsolved mysteries that continue to baffle and tales so bizarre you won't believe they actually happened. To stay in the loop with every captivating story, make sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like, and ring that notification bell. Trust me, you don't want to miss a single episode of these extraordinary stories we're about to unravel. Now let the storytelling begin. The Frog Boys case is a haunting and perplexing tale that unfolded in South Korea in 1991. On March 26th of that year, during a public holiday coinciding with the first ever local elections, five young boys embarked on an innocent adventure to search for salamander eggs in the streams of Mount Waryong in Delseo, located in the western outskirts of Daegu. Waryong Mountain is one of many mountains in the Daegu area. It's also the closest mountain to the village where the boys lived. In Korea, it's not unusual for kids, even young ones, to play in the surrounding mountains and feel safe. Unfortunately, the mountain was not safe for the five young boys that day. The boys, Wu Chu Wan, 13 years old, Jo Ho Yan, 12 years old, Kim Young Yu, 11 years old, Park Chan In, 10 years old, and Kim Jong Sik, nine years old, were inseparable friends attending the same elementary school in Dalseo District in Daegu. Their strong bond earned them the nickname the Five Musketeers, as they lived nearby within the same village, often playing together in the courtyard formed by the interconnected homes. United by friendship and camaraderie, they embarked on what seemed like a typical childhood quest, catching frogs in the nearby mountains. Among the group, a sixth child, nine-year-old Kim Tai Rong, temporarily left to have breakfast at home. Following his mother's advice not to stray too far, he later rejoined the group, but chose not to continue on with the boys. These families were tightly knit and each boy possessed a vibrant and unique personality. Wu Chia Wan's infectious laughter, Jo Ho Yan's inquisitive nature, Kim Young Yu's kindness, Park Chan In's energetic spirit, and Kim Jong Sik's love for storytelling made them beloved figures in their households. As the boy set out at nine in the morning, excitement was in the air. But when they didn't get back home by one in the afternoon, especially after missing their Taekwondo class, their parents became concerned. As evening approached with no sign of their return, worry escalated to sheer panic, prompting the local community to initiate an exhaustive search operation. The parents reported their concerns to the police, but initial responses fell short as authorities did not take the disappearances seriously. Instead, they labeled the boys as runaways, overlooking the urgency of the situation. The parents created flyers that indicated the boys were missing. However, the police redistributed the flyers, changing the description to runaways. The media didn't even start covering the story until five days after the boys failed to return home. Among the whispers of concern and confusion, a chilling detail emerged. A friend of the boys had seen them heading toward the mountain and reported hearing a gunshot 
followed by a scream, then silence. This ominous piece of information, though shared with the police, was met with skepticism and inaction, a decision that would come to haunt the investigation and fuel speculation for years to come. The families, bound by shared grief and uncertainty, clung to the hope that the boys would be found safe. The emotional toll on the parents was immeasurable as they grappled with the unimaginable prospect of their children being in danger. The five fathers were determined to do everything possible for the missing children. They had quit their jobs, rented a small lorry, and kept searching across the country, come rain or shine. The lorry had photos of the children pasted on the sides and coded to withstand the rain. Written below were the words, please help find our missing children. The case eventually caught the attention of the highest level of government. In an unprecedented move, President Ro Tae Wu ordered the mobilization of 300,000 police and military personnel to join the search efforts. This massive deployment, while highlighting the seriousness with which the search was now being taken, also underscored the growing fear that the boys had met with foul play. Despite the extensive manpower and resources dedicated to the search, the efforts were hampered by a lack of coordination and expertise in handling missing person cases of such magnitude. The rugged and dense terrain of Mount Rawiyong presented significant challenges, with searchers combing through every possible hiding spot, cave, and crevice, only to come up empty-handed time and again. Days turned into weeks, yet there was no trace of the Frog Boys. Despite the extensive search efforts, the mystery deepened, leaving the nation gripped with questions about how five boys familiar with an area could vanish without a trace. The families clung to hope amidst their shared grief and uncertainty, determined to find their missing children. During this period, the investigation saw numerous twists and turns. In September of 1996, Kim Ja Wan, a Korean American specializing in criminal psychology, controversially accused John Sik's father of being guilty of the murders of the children because he couldn't account for the first three hours on the day the children went missing. Without substantial evidence, he claimed that all five boys were buried beneath their house. They ended up digging with an excavator while the media was filming the event and many people had gathered to watch, but nothing was found. Finally, on September 26, 2002, 11 years later, on a day like any other in the quiet expanse of Mount Waria, the heartbreaking discovery came to light when two men searching for acorns found the bodies of the frog boys an area previously searched over 500 times. The bodies were tied together with partially removed clothes. They were found less than a mile from their homes. When the police were notified of the discovery, everyone started showing up at the scene. Unfortunately, the police lacked expertise in excavating bodies. They plowed through the dirt with pickaxes and dug up whatever they could find without following proper method or without proper forensic tools. They even organized bones haphazardly, grouping long bones and skulls, a process that experts would have handled differently to reconstruct the body accurately. For two to three hours, the police made numerous mistakes, adding to the anguish of the families. To worsen the matter, the police piled up the bones and then asked the parents to identify the child, leaving the family feeling helpless and enraged. There were also claims that the bodies weren't transported appropriately from the scene. Rather than being placed in body bags, they were allegedly put into sacks. Initially, authorities suggested that the boys had succumbed to hypothermia but their parents rejected this conclusion, 
demanding a thorough investigation. The police continue to report no evidence of foul play and that they must have huddled together to stay warm. But that made no sense to everyone else. It was not that cold, and the boys could have run home in five minutes. After a thorough forensic exam, investigators discovered serious cranial damage to the heads of three boys, and one boy was shot in the head. Searchers found unspent bullets at the scene, knotted in their clothing. The discovery of the Frog Boys did little to soothe the wounds of a nation. Instead, it opened new avenues of grief and outrage. The botched handling of the crime scene by the police drew severe criticism, undermining public trust in the investigative process. Families were left not only to mourn their unimaginable loss, but to contend with the frustrating lack of answers and accountability from those tasked with uncovering the truth. The impact of the Frog Boys case in South Korea society was profound. It highlighted deficiencies in the handling of missing persons cases and the need for professional and sensitive treatment of crime scenes. The tragedy of the Frog Boys cast a dark shadow over the community, the nation, and the families. The question of who could commit such a heinous crime against innocent children haunted everyone involved. One theory posited by authorities was that the children fell victim to an individual who may have flown into a rage, leading to their untimely deaths. This theory, alongside other speculations, including potential involvement from a military base or a psychopath, has left the case shrouded in mystery with no conclusive resolution in sight. As time marches on, the families of the Frog Boys persist in their quest for justice, their lives indelibly marked by the tragedy. The unresolved nature of the case continues to cast a long shadow over the collective consciousness of South Korea, embodying a profound and lasting impact that resonates throughout the nation. As we reflect on the legacy of the Frog Boys, we are reminded of the fragility of life and the importance of a community's resolve in the face of tragedy. Their story is a somber testament to the enduring impact of unsolved mysteries on the collective consciousness of a society. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the mysteries of the unexplained. Remember to subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on every captivating story we uncover. Until next time, keep your eyes open and your mind curious. Stay tuned for more stories from As Told by Bells.